Hey, what's going on everyone? Appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Fallout 76 video. In this one, I am bringing you guys a lot of tips in one video. I decided I would compile some of my old tip videos that are still reliable and useful till this day into one big video for your guys' convenience. These tips will be useful for veterans of the game and new players. I know there are a lot of new players jumping into the game right now, and there is quite a bit to grasp at first, you know, just coming out of Vault 76 into the Wasteland. So hopefully this video will help lighten the load a bit and get you to understand some more about the game. So yeah, we go over advanced tips and beginner tips in this video. It's for everyone. But yeah, decided I'd upload this now once again just because I know there are loads of new players jumping into the game. I genuinely wanted to get this out now just to help players better understand the game and hopefully get them to stick around. Consider leaving a like on the video and heck, maybe even a comment as well to help boost this video in the algorithm so this can get out to more players. But that's totally up to you. Just leave a reminder here in the beginning. Hopefully this does help out guys and feel free to use the timestamps available. I know this is a long one, so there are timestamps for your guys' convenience too. If you feel like you already know a few tips, skip forward in the video. You are more than likely gonna learn something new from this. There are loads of tips jam-packed into this one video. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into all of these now. Hope you all enjoy. So this first tip is to make sure you turn your camp public map icon on. You can do that by clicking your camp and then scrolling down to public map icon and then turning it on. This makes it so other players will be able to see your camp on the map. Like, as you can see, I can see this guy's camp on the map. That's because his public map icon is on. So yeah, make sure you do that if you want players to visit your camp or they're not going to be able to find you or if you don't want players to visit your camp then make sure you turn it off but yeah anyways these next few tips will be over in the white spring mall this is a very convenient location to know about and it's over at the white spring resort i'm currently outside of the resort here and one of the ways to find the mall in case you don't know is by entering the place through here and once inside here you could find the mall down these stairs and one of the reasons why the White Spring Mall is convenient to travel to is because of everything that you can find in the Artisan's Corner shop inside of this place. As you can see, you can find loads of crafting stations here. A weapons workbench, some chemistry stations, some power armor stations. You can even find a brewing station here. There's also cooking stations you can utilize, armor workbenches here you can utilize, and tinkers workbenches here for you. There's also a stash box here you can use and a scrap box here you can use. Not to mention a place where you can respec your character at if you want to. As you can see, this machine here will help you respect your character. There's also a legendary exchange machine in here that you can use to, you know, scrap your legendaries to get script. That's also here. And there's also a gold press machine here that you can turn your treasury notes to for gold bullion. So, yeah, you got loads here that you can utilize in this one area. So say like you don't have enough to make like a weapons workbench currently at your camp. You can easily just come here and use this weapons workbench. Or you don't have enough to make like a power armor station. Or you don't have room or something for some of these uh, workbenches at your camp. You can just come here and use these. They're all provided for you right here in this location. This is definitely a convenient spot to know about. Anyways, another reason why this spot is convenient to know about is because of all the vendors here. Like for instance, trading with this vendor, you can get bulk junk if that's what you're looking for. Um, over here inside this shop, Studio 58, you can find tons of camp plans if that's what you're looking for. You might find something in here that you don't know and you know want to spend your caps on to know it. There's tons of camp plans inside of this shop. Uh, there's also plans you can find over here from this vendor. As you can see, you might find some that you don't know from this vendor. I currently see some plans that I haven't learned yet from this one. But yeah, there's tons of vendors around in this location that will benefit you. I feel like it's important to know that these vendors have tons of plans that you may not know and could help you out in your travels. They even have a vendor bot inside the Le Grand Gourmet here where you could purchase loads of recipes from to learn. And these change up too each time you hop servers, so you may find something different your next time around. Keep in mind though, not all of these shops sell 
plans and recipes. Some of them might sell just like aid items or clothing or junk items. So keep that in mind. Like this shop here only sells, you know, aid items. It doesn't sell any plans. But if you're looking for some quick aid items, this is a place to go to to purchase some. The chemist shop here makes sense but yeah that's another tip about the white spring mall all the vendors that are around here you can find loads of goodies from these and it's good to know too when you do hop servers the vendors inventories will switch up a bit as well be sure to be also selling some things to them to stock up on some caps and another tip i want to throw out there is how you can unlock the fast travel point to fast travel directly to the white spring mall all you gotta do is unlock the White Spring North Entrance location on the map. And a way to do that is just exit out of the North Entrance from the White Spring Mall. This will unlock the location that's needed in order to fast travel to the mall. This will help you save some time not having to wait through as many loading screens. But yeah, this is definitely an important place to know about. Another bonus is, once you do discover this place, it is free to fast travel here too. Which brings me to my next tip, and that is to take advantage of the free fast travel spots around the map. The White Spring Resort being one of them, but another spot where you can fast travel for free at is over at the crater. So say like you have to go to an area around the crater. Let's just use the knife edge for an example. As you can see right now, it costs me 40 caps to fast travel over to the knife edge. However, if I fast travel to the crater first, and then fast travel over to the knife edge. As you can see, it only costs us two caps now. So I just saved myself 38 caps from just fast traveling from where I once was. But yeah, some other spots where we can fast travel free at are over at Foundation, the Settler Settlement, and we can also fast travel free to Fort Atlas, right here, where the Brotherhood of Steel's at. Anyways, you can also fast travel free over to Vault 76, as well as to the Rusty Pick, which is located in the ash heap. This is where the purveyor is at. And you can also fast travel for free to your own camp and to public events with exclamation points. You can also fast travel for free to them. So yeah, there's free fast travel points all around the map to help you in the long run save some caps. However, you are gonna have to go through some more loading screens though. So getting to the location could take a bit more time. So that is a downfall over using the free fast travel locations. But overall, this will help you save caps. Anyways, next up, I'm gonna be getting into treasury notes. You get treasury notes by completing certain quests and events. Depending on the difficulty level of the event, will be how much treasury notes you'll be rewarded for completing that specific event. Like as you can see here, the event Heart of the Swamp is available to go do. And if I go over and click on the event to join it, it states what I'll get from completing it. As you can see, the potential rewards are legendary items, legendary cores, and treasury notes. And the amount of treasury notes you get depend on the difficulty level of the public event. Like for example, medium difficulty public events like the Heart of the Swamp, you get three treasury notes when completing. And for hard difficulty level public events, you'll get four treasury notes. Like if you complete Radiation Rumble, or if you defeat the Scorched Beast Queen at the Scorched Earth event after nuking the Fisher Site Prime, you'll get four treasury notes for doing these public events. Which I definitely recommend to join in on the hard difficulty level public events because you'll get loads of experience too from them. But yeah, the hardest difficulty level public event is considered very hard, and you'll get eight treasury notes when completing it. Like for example, the Colossal Problem event where you have to go inside Monongah Mine and take on the Wendigo Colossus boss named Earl Williams and then escape the mine. Yeah, that event can definitely be worth it completing. There's also other unique rewards that come from it too. But anyways, these next tips I'm going to be getting into are where to go to turn in your treasury notes at. I'm going to be showing a few locations over where you can go. And I'll also be showing you where to go to spend your gold bullion that you get from the treasury notes. Just in case you don't know, because this is some really important information to know about in Fallout 76. First location will be over here at Foundation, which is the Settler Settlement. It's located right here on the map. Yeah, once you get over here, uh, you can find a gold press machine to turn in your treasury notes over here next to Samuel, which is the vendor that sells things for gold bullion. As you can see, the gold press machine though is located right here. And keep in mind, each treasury note is worth 10 gold bullion. So you're able to turn in 40 at a time to get 400 gold bullion a day. And also one of the locations where you can spend your gold bullion at is from this guy here named Samuel at the Settler Settlement. 
as you can see he sells a lot of goodies and keep in mind the higher reputation that you have with the settlers the more things become available for him to sell to you so yeah this is one area where you could turn in your treasury notes and spend your gold bullion at another location will be located over at the crater the raiders settlement which is located right here on the map on the complete opposite side now i'm going to be choosing to fast travel to the exterior of this place just in case you haven't been over here and unlocked the crater core because that's where we have to go over here to spend our gold bullion and turn in our treasury notes at but yeah once you're over here to enter the crater core you just have to head on over here as you can see there's a sign right here that states core and points up so yeah this is the entrance to it and once you're inside the crater core here to be able to turn in your treasury notes you'll just have to head on over here as you can see here's the gold press machine and to spend your gold bullion you just have to head on over to mortimer which the vendor is located right here inside this place as you can see and keep in mind it's the same scenario with the settlers vendor samuel the higher and better reputation that you have with the raiders the more things become available from mortimer that he sells so yeah, keep that in mind. If you don't see anything that you like at first, you may find some things that you like over time. I'm not going to be getting into everything that they sell though in this video. But I will say I think it is pretty worth it to get the reputation up for the Raiders and Settlers. And it just gives you another thing to do in the game as well. Anyways, like I mentioned before, there's also a gold press machine at the White Spring Mall next to the Legendary Exchange Machine. I'm not going to count this as a tip though just because I already went over this briefly. Just a reminder though that there is one here too. But anyways lastly here I'm going to be showing you another vendor that you can go to to spend your gold bullion. And that vendor is located in Vault 79. The vault's located near Bailey Family Cabin. But yeah inside of Vault 79 you can find the vendor that you could trade with over here as you can see his name's Rex and this guy has loads of things available for gold bullion as you can see I mean look at all of this available it's insane plenty of great stuff you can purchase from this guy however keep in mind you can only access this place after you complete the Wastelanders questline and in case you don't know what the Wastelanders story questline is and where it starts at you get the first quest at the very beginning of your adventure as soon as you exit out of Vault 76. The Wayward Souls quest is at the beginning of the Wastelander storyline. Eventually further on in the quest line, once you get done completing the quest the Elusive Crane, the next part will require you to be at level 20 at least. If not, the Overseer will see you unfit and you won't be able to progress yet. But yeah, once you do reach that level, the next part will begin over here inside the Overseer's home at Sutton. Tuning in to the Overseer's broadcast in the radio tab of your Pip-Boy will give you coordinates to her home. She'll want to meet face to face to talk. This will be the beginning of the New Arrivals questline, which is still a part of the Wastelanders storyline. This was all added within the Wastelanders update, the update that added human NPCs in the game. Yeah. That's how you gain access to this place. And it's also good to know if you already are level 20 or higher, you could just start this part of the Wastelander storyline if you want. You could skip past the Wayward part. And in case you're wondering, whichever side you do choose, the same things will still be available to purchase with gold bullion. You don't miss out on like any special gold bullion items. Another reason why it's worth it to get through the Wastelanders questline is because of the NPC that shows up in the second story of the Wayward. This NPC named Smiley up here will sell you gold bullion for caps. As you can see, here's what he looks like. Very patriotic looking. And uh, yeah, if you go and talk to him, he can actually sell you gold bullion. You just tell him you're interested in gold bullion. And here are the options that'll come up. You can pay 1,000 caps to get 50 gold bullion. 2,000 to get 100. 3,000 for 150. 4,000 for 200, 5,000 for 250, and 6,000 caps for 300 gold bullion. You're able to purchase 300 gold bullion from this guy per week. So it can help you get your hands on more gold bullion faster if you got the caps. This is just another reason why getting through the Wastelanders quest line is worth it. Anyways, the next tip is going to be over what to do with the legendary cores because you do get these from doing 
public events and whatnot. So yeah, these are for crafting legendary weapons, armor, and even power armor too. Like for example here, if I want to go craft a legendary weapon, all I gotta do is go up to a weapons workbench and choose the modify and repair option. And then once we're here, you just want to select a weapon that you want to modify and then choose this option that states random legendary mods. This is how you can craft one star, two star, and three star legendaries. One star legendary weapon is gonna cost one core and two modules. Two stars is gonna cost three cores and three modules. And three stars are gonna cost five cores and four modules. But yeah, that's what the cores are for and how you craft legendaries. And if you get effects that you don't like, you can always re-roll the effects and try to get some better ones by just simply choosing to spend the cores and modules to craft another legendary. As you can see at the bottom it states generate random 1, 2, and 3 star legendary mods. However, this will replace any existing 1, 2, and 3 star legendary mods that are on it. And if you're wondering how you craft armor legendaries, all you gotta do is go up to an armor's workbench and it's the same scenario. Choose the modify and repair option and then select the piece that you want to modify. And as you can see, you just choose random legendary mods. And yeah, that's how you craft one star, two star, three star. And like I mentioned before, you can craft legendary power armor too. All you have to do is go up to a power armor station and pull out your power armor at the station and then choose the modify and repair option. And it's the same scenario. Choose the piece that you want to modify and then select the random legendary mods option to roll some legendary effects on the power armor piece. Anyways, this next tip is over the personal terminal that we can get. This is available for free in the atomic shop in the utility category. As you can see, you can get it for free if you haven't got it yet. Speaking of that, I had to sign into a whole other account just to show you that it is available for free because I already got it on the account that I usually play on and it just said owned. But yeah, this personal terminal is actually pretty useful, especially if you're just starting out. And to top it off, it doesn't even require power to run, so you don't have to have all the materials to craft a generator to run this thing. It's pretty easy to craft, especially if you're just starting. As you can see, it's just going to require four aluminum, two circuitry, two copper, and two rubber. But yeah, once you got it at your camp, just go up and use it, and go down and check out automated alerts. And as you can see, these options can be available. Anomalous seismic activity, unknown machinery at train stations, and suspicious person. Each of these will trigger a specific mini miscellaneous quest for you. These quests actually are great at introducing you to some important things in the game. Such as for one, the anomalous seismic activity option will give you coordinates to where the purveyor is located at at the rusty pick, which the purveyor sells things for special currency called script. As you can see, you can purchase legendary modules for 50 script each. You can purchase false steel scrap for 10 script each. And you can also buy random legendary weapons and armor too. Such as a random 3 star legendary armor will cost you 60 script. A random 3 star legendary melee weapon will cost you 100 script. A random 3 star legendary power armor will cost you 120 script. And a random legendary 3 star ranged weapon will cost you 100 script. It's all a gamble with the legendary weapons and armor, but you never know what you're going to get. You could get something really good eventually. I know I have in the past. So yeah, there's quite a bit of nice things you can purchase from the purveyor for script. Which speaking of script, the unknown machinery at train stations option on the personal terminal will let you know about how these strange machines are around train stations. And these strange machines are legendary exchange machines. So yeah, these coordinates will lead you straight to a legendary exchange machine at the nearest train station. Which we turn in our unwanted legendary items to these legendary exchange machines for script to buy things from the purveyor. They go hand in hand. Actually, you can find a legendary exchange machine too at the Rusty Pick where the purveyor is located at. But yeah, these are definitely convenient to know about. Anyways, the suspicious person option will give you coordinates to a Taurus that has some items on them that you loot. Those items will be a holotape, a bucket list, and a broken camera. And once you do loot these items, you'll trigger a quest called Bucket List. This quest is an introduction to the camera. It shows you how to repair a broken one and use it. You'll have to use it during this quest too. You have to take pictures over the locations the tourist had on their bucket list. So yeah, at the beginning of this quest, you'll have to go to a tinker's workbench to repair the broken camera that you got. And once you're on a tinker's workbench, you'll just have to choose the camera option. This is where you can repair the broken camera. As you can see, it's going to require three adhesive, five aluminum, one broken camera, two glass, 
five silver, and three springs. So yeah, that's how you're able to use a camera, in case you didn't know. I will also mention, once you do repair the camera, you'll also get some film with it too, which is beneficial because it does require it to use it. Whenever you run out, you can just craft more at the same place where you're able to uh, repair the broken camera at on the Tinker's Workbench. I will also mention, completing the bucket list rewards you with some caps, some photo frames for photo mode. It'll also reward you with a camera lens modification to make it so you can zoom in with your camera and you'll get a postcard collage poster that you can place at your camp and of course some experience too. So yeah, you get some unique things for completing this. Anyways, this next tip is one of the benefits over getting the camera. Once you complete the new arrivals quest line and trigger the overseer overseen main quest, which is the next part of the Wastelanders story quest line, you'll also unlock the ability to do a very useful daily quest with Davenport that requires a camera to complete. As you can see, as soon as I completed the new arrivals, a miscellaneous quest popped up to go talk to Davenport. This is a useful daily quest you can do with the robot that's inside the basement of the Overseer's home, which is located right here from Vault 76. Davenport will want us to go take pictures of either the crater or foundation for intel. The convenient thing about doing this is that you can gain faction reputation with either the raiders or settlers, depending on which place you decide to get pictures of. For example, I just took pictures around the crater, and now I have a choice to return these to Davenport or show these to Ward to get faction reputation experience. I gotta say, it's definitely worth it to show the faction because, as some of you may know, it takes a very long time to get max reputation with the settlers and raiders. So doing this for some extra faction reputation each day will definitely help the process of getting to max. This is a great benefit to know about that you can do if you take the time to get the camera. Anyways, afterwards, once you do get the faction reputation experience, be sure to return to Davenport to fully complete this daily quest so you can repeat it the next day for more faction reputation. I will mention another tip. If you have eight and higher charisma, when you do return to the robot, you don't have to technically tell them that you sold the photos to someone else. As you can see, this option will become available if you have 8 and higher charisma. And choosing this one will make it so Davenport won't be as upset with you and will give you some caps still for completing this. Anyway, something else to know is if you do complete the bucket list quest and get the camera lens modification, a new modification will become available as a reward from completing the photo opportunity daily quest with Davenport. All you'll have to do is after you take the pictures, just head back and give them to Davenport instead of turning them into a faction to get faction reputation. I will mention too, when you do go back to Davenport to give the photos, these special dialogue options will be available to help better the rewards you get from completing this daily quest. You'll have to have at least 8 and higher charisma or 8 and higher intelligence. So yeah, keep that in mind. I do recommend if you are wanting the camera lens, uh, once you do get it, to just go back to getting faction reputation from this daily because it does help with the progress of getting better faction reputation. It's just another thing you can do to get more reputation experience. And you'll also get script and treasury notes too. So yeah, doing this daily is worth it. Anyway, speaking of reputation, that's what I'm going to be getting into lastly here, just in case you don't know much about it. Um, first off, in case you don't know how to check your reputation status with the settlers and raiders, all you got to do is pull up the social menu and then go above the public teams and where your friends list is located at and whatnot. As you can see, it states what your reputation status is at. On this profile, I'm currently neighborly with the Raiders and neighborly with the Settlers, which is right before maxing the reputation status. After neighborly is max reputation. And it takes a while to officially max, I will say. Which, speaking of getting your reputation status better, I guess I should show you a few more daily quests that you could do each day you sign in. Over at Foundation, where the Settlers are located at, you could talk to Ward over here. Ward's located in this little trailer here. And when you go to talk to him, he'll want some help retrieving some stolen goods. And if you choose to help him, this will be the beginning of the daily quest called Vital Equipment. Doing this will help increase your settler reputation. It's really easy. All you have to do is just go where it says to on the map and retrieve the stolen goods. And when you do go search for the goods, you can activate a tracking device to locate them easier. It'll be located in the radio category of the Pip-Boy. This is very convenient to use. I do also recommend when you do go return these stolen goods to just donate them back to Ward instead of wanting something in return for doing it because it'll give you an extra little boost with your settler reputation. Anyways, yeah, also keep in mind the higher reputation status you have, 
the more things become available to purchase with gold bullion from Samuel over here. As you can see, this is the settler's gold bullion vendor. So yeah, this is one of the major benefits over increasing your reputation status. More unique things become available for you. Anyways, as for the raiders, you can find some daily quests over here at the crater from speaking with Roxy. She's located over here against the bus. The quest she gives you isn't difficult. You'll just have to deal with the former raider and then return and talk to her. Anyways, another daily over here that you can do will be provided from Rin, which she's located over here inside this place. Each of these NPCs will provide a daily quest for you to do to increase your raider rep. So yeah, definitely recommend completing these each day. I will say if the raider's dailies aren't available, it's probably because you haven't got through the new arrivals quest line and did the strange bedfellows part where you have to convince the raiders to get inoculated. But yeah, just like the settlers, the higher reputation you have, the more things will become available. The vendor that sells things over here for gold bullion will be located inside the crater core near Meg. As you see, it's this robot named Mortimer. All right, so yeah, that is a lot of information over the raiders and settlers. I guess now let's go ahead and get into some information over what you get if you max the settlers and raiders reputation and why it's worth it. First off, in case you don't know, the lowest reputation status is hostile, and then it goes to cautious, neutral, cooperative, friendly, neighborly, and after neighborly is ally, which is the highest reputation status you can get. This is max. But yeah, let's go ahead and start with what becomes available with the settlers, which they are located over here from Vault 76 at Foundation. Samuel over here is the gold bullion vendor and has unique items you can purchase. It's important to know that the higher you get your settler reputation, the more things become available from Samuel you can purchase with gold bullion. Like for example, if you have max reputation and achieved ally status with the settlers, you can purchase allies that you might have missed getting in previous scoreboards. In case you don't know, scoreboards have unique rewards for players to get. You can find your current scoreboard by just pulling up the map then pulling up the menu and then just go down the scoreboard. Keep in mind the scoreboards are seasonal and do change up and something very special players can get in some of the scoreboards are allies and if you missed any of the allies you can purchase them from Samuel which is just amazing because I know allies is something players worry about missing out on. I know I wanted Maul the super mutant as an ally in my camp and missed out on getting him because I wasn't playing as much then but as you can see I can purchase Maul for 4,000 gold bullion. Sure yeah it definitely takes a lot of gold bullion to get but at least we don't completely miss out on these special allies, but that's the design for our enjoyment. It's awesome to think about how players who might not even have been around for some of these scoreboards to even have a chance to get these allies as a reward are still able to get them too. It's nice that this is even a thing. Keep in mind though, the allies you've already unlocked from the scoreboard won't be available from Samuel. Also, it's good to know the unique collectrons that you might have missed out on will be available from them too, such as the fetch collectron, the robotic dog one for an example. But yeah, anyways, if you're a shotgun user, you can also get this Gauss shotgun for 500 gold bullion and it has loads of modifications to help beep it up even more too that you can purchase. This shotgun is incredible and becomes available once you max the settler's reputation. Here's a little bit of gameplay of it in action. Anyways, also the turbo fertilizer becomes available, which just generates a bomb that you can throw down to generate your crops immediately back. This is great for crafting purposes. You're able to get many great things from the settlers. Oh yeah, and you'll also get an achievement too called a solid foundation when you max out the settler reputation. So that's pretty awesome. Anyways, as for the raiders, they are located over here from Vault 76 at the crater. And the special vendor that sells items for gold bullion will be located inside the crater core, which is right over here inside this. Once in here, you can find the vendor named Mortimer, and this is the special vendor that sells unique items for gold bullion. But yeah, if you max the Raider reputation, the Gauss minigun and its modifications become available, which the Gauss minigun is one powerful heavy weapon, as you can see here for a quick example.
Also, the Armco Ammunition Construction Appliance becomes available. If you purchase this, you can place it at your camp and it'll generate your ammunition over time that you can get. And you get to choose what ammunition you want it to generate, as you can see here. So, yeah. It's definitely beneficial and you'll also get an achievement too for maxing out the raiders reputation called friends in low places just like how you'll get an achievement for maxing out the settlers and keep in mind for each of these vendors there's plenty of other things that become available besides what i just went over i just decided to cover the stuff that you unlock when you get the settlers and raiders reputation to max at the moment i don't know if bethesda has plans to add even more stuff in the future but yeah it is worth it to work on your reputation with the factions. Speaking of working on your reputation, there's a daily that you can do over at the White Spring Resort that can help either your settlers or raiders reputation, depending on which faction you give the stew that you make to. Keep in mind, you can just teleport right inside the White Spring Resort too, if you've already been in there before. I recommend coming in here each day and doing this daily to help your reputation. It's really easy too. All you gotta do once you're in the White Spring Resort is go talk to the chef that's located over here, and this will start up the refuge daily called Recipe for success and during this to start it you're just gonna have to stir the stew and then you're just gonna have to go look for food ingredients that are around this general vicinity of the building they're not too difficult to locate either there are navigators that guide you in a direction of around where they're located at but once you get the food ingredients you just have to return where the chef is at and get it prepared to be placed in the pot so yeah you don't immediately just throw the food ingredients into the pot you're gonna have to prepare them for the stew. Anyways, once you got all the prepping done with the food, you're just gonna have to place it in the pot. And then you'll just have to go and search for the spices around. And then once you find the bowl of salt and bowl of black pepper, you'll then just have to add it in the stew that's in the pot, and then just talk to the chef. Keep in mind though, while you are searching around for the ingredients, you may have to return and stir the stew to make sure it cooks good and doesn't burn. But yeah, once you finish and talk to her, I recommend adding a stem pack to the stew if you have one, because both factions do like it with that. Uh, but once you got it made, all you'll have to do is just head on over here to this room and you will find a lady sitting down, which this is the settler side, and the guy standing over at the bar is for the raiders. So if you give the stew to the raiders, you're going to get raider reputation, and if you give the stew to the settler side, you're going to get settler reputation. Definitely convenient to know about. Helps you get more reputation experience each day. I will mention also if you did add a stem pack within the stew, you'll receive the restorative vention and tato stew. And as you can see what it does is it restores health with an initial burst and it increases your health regeneration for 30 minutes. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Some other ways to increase your settler and raider reputation is to make sure you do not miss the events eviction notice and moonshine jamboree that come up in your server. These events are very beneficial and they give you reputation for either the settlers or raiders, depending on which event you're doing. If you do the eviction notice events, you'll get settler reputation, and if you complete the moonshine jamboree event, you'll get raider reputation. So yeah, try not to miss out on these. I will mention it's also good to know, once the eviction notice event pops up in your server and you fast travel over to participate in it, if it hasn't began yet to start it, all you have to do is repair the rat scrubber that's over here. However, be warned though, once you do repair it, loads of super mutants will start spawning in to try to destroy it. So I do suggest to wait for more players to arrive before repairing it and getting it started. Just to make sure you know players don't miss out on this event, and it'll make it much easier to do with more players helping out. The goal is to just destroy the meat bags that are around the area, and most importantly, protect the rat scrubber from the loads of super mutants. There will be waves and waves of super mutants, which is great experience and loot. There will even be plenty of legendary super mutants that will spawn too, so you'll get loads of legendaries from attending and doing this event. And not only will you get settler reputation for completing eviction notice, but there's also unique rewards too you can only get from completing it. And I will mention after the event's done, it's great to loot all the super mutant stuff and break down what you can into resources. You can get loads of resources from scrapping their weapons. Anyways, as for Moonshine Jamboree, once you see the event pop up, you'll have to head over to Sunday Brothers Cabin and talk to Moonshiner Ned in the cabin to start up the event. I do recommend, just like Eviction Notice, to wait for players to show up just to make sure players don't miss out on the event. And, you know, it does make the event easier with more players helping out. Once the Moonshine Jamboree starts, you'll have to light the Jamboree fire, and then you'll have to defend the stills from loads of gulpers and ghouls, even some fog crawlers too. You'll also have to collect acidic gulper venom and deliver them to the tub inside the cabin. 
But yeah, just like Eviction Notice, there will be plenty of enemies to take out for experience and loads of loot to scavenge and break down into resources. There will also be legendary gulpers that will show up too, so you'll also get plenty of legendaries from this too. But yeah, when you complete this, you'll get Raider Reputation and unique rewards that specifically only come from this event, just like once again Eviction Notice. Definitely don't miss out on these public events if you ever see them pop up in game. They're extremely beneficial to do, even if you already have Max, Settler, and Raider Reputation. It's still beneficial to go and participate in these. Anyways, another way to boost your Raider Reputation is by helping out some Raiders that's over at Ohio River Adventures. Over here, you can find a named raider that goes by Black Eye, and she's going to be wanting some Mylurk products each day, such as you can choose to give her some Mylurk eggs, some regular Mylurk meat. However, to get the most amount of raider reputation experience from doing this daily is by giving her Mylurk queen meat. And yeah, if you don't know where a Mylurk queen is located at, one location you can find one at is over at the quarry times three, which is located right here. Just take it out and return to Black Guy and give her the Mylurk queen meat each day for a little bit of a raider reputation boost. It's not much, but it's still something. And also you could talk to Fishbones over here, which he's located back here by the boat. And this guy's gonna be needing help defending the place, specifically the purifiers from Mylurks that'll show up once you accept that you'll help them. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward to do it. Just defend the place. And once all is said and done, just go and talk to him. And one of the responses you can say is, a friend of Crater is a friend of mine. Glad to do what I can. And yeah, after helping defend off the Mylurks and saying that to Fishbones, you'll get a little bit of extra Raider reputation. Once again, it's not much, but still, doing these each day can help toward getting a better reputation with the Raiders. These are beneficial to know about. But yeah, I feel like I've covered enough tips over ways to increase the faction reputations. I've even covered more ways to increase the faction reputations in part two of Tips I Wish I Knew Sooner. If you haven't seen part two or part one, I definitely recommend checking them out sometime. I'll have links to the videos in the description. Anyways, moving forward, in case you all don't know, I wanted to bring awareness to the special vendor named Minerva. Minerva is a unique traveling vendor that has great deals on rare plans that'll cost gold bullion. For example, you can purchase the Gal shotgun from her without having to max a settler reputation. You can also purchase the Gauss minigun from her too. I will say though a downfall is she doesn't sell any of the allies or collectrons that you might have missed from the scoreboards. However, she does have some things that you might be wanting but just can't get at the moment because you don't have max reputation with the settlers or raiders. She'll also have plenty of other rare plans that you can purchase too for gold bullion, not just the ones that you can get from the settlers and raiders. Yeah, this vendor is definitely beneficial to know about. However, keep in mind, she works a little different from others because she may not even be in the game sometimes when you go and look for her. Here's how she works. She'll spawn at three different locations. One of the spots you can find her at will be over here at Fort Atlas. Once you get over here, you just want to turn around from Fort Atlas and she'll have a chance of spawning right here. As you can see, here she is. Um, another spot where she can spawn at will be over at the crater, where the raiders are at. As soon as you spawn in over at the crater, just turn around and head through this right here, and she'll have a chance of being right here at this general vicinity. Anyways, lastly, another area that she could spawn at will be over at Foundation, the settler settlement. She'll have a chance of spawning right here, right outside of Foundation. Keep in mind though, sometimes she may not be at any of these locations because she's on a break. This is how Minerva's weekly schedule will work. Each week, she'll be in the game for a few days at one of the spots I showed you. So say like one of the weeks, you find her near Fort Atlas. After a few days, she'll leave the game and she'll then return the next week at one of the spots I showed you. She'll then do the same thing again, stay in the game for a few days, then leave. So if you don't see her anywhere, she's currently taking a break from selling. So yeah, keep that in mind. However, on the fourth week that she makes a return, she'll spawn in on a different day than usual and stay a little longer too at one of the spots I showed you. And most importantly, to top it off, she'll be doing her big sale too, which this will include even more of a variety of good deals for rare plans and her inventory for gold bullion. It's definitely worth it to check out her big sale. But anyways, once this ends, her schedule will then start over and repeat the same process the following week. So yeah, that's how her schedule works. She's basically on a four week cycle. The first three weeks, she's having her regular sales and on her fourth week, she makes a return in the game. She has her big sale, which includes more of a variety of rare plans to purchase for gold bullion. And then after her fourth week of her having her big sale, she'll then take a break. And then when she returns, she'll reset back to having her regular sales and does the whole process 
over again. Has her little sales first three times and then her big sale. And the things that she sells are discounted from what they usually are too. So it's definitely beneficial to find her and purchase what you can from her. You'll be able to get more things for less gold bullion. If you've ever played Destiny, she's like Xur. She's a unique vendor that comes in the game on certain days. Also, you could choose to talk to her and she'll also have her bodyguard Tommy Tentos with her too that you can talk to as well. I highly suggest that they have some interesting dialogue to check out, but I'm not gonna be showing that in this video. Let's go ahead and move on to the next tip. This next one will be over the lookout towers. In case you don't know, traveling to the top of these that you find around the wasteland are worth it because at the top, as you can see, you'll have an option to survey the area. And this will find locations you might have not discovered around the vicinity. It's definitely useful, especially when you're first starting and trying to find new locations. Because each time you find a new location, you get experience too to help you level up. As for an example here, we identified six new locations. As you can see, they will be grayed out on the map of the ones that we found surveying the area. Keep in mind though, while it's grayed out, you can't fast travel over to the location. You have to actually go over there to unlock being able to fast travel to the place. But yeah, lookout towers can be convenient. Be warned, there's typically enemies around lookout towers too that you'll have to take on. Anyways, this next tip will be over team play. In case you don't know, you're able to create or join a public team. All you gotta do is pull up the map and then go to social and then go over to public teams. Here you'll be able to join other teams in the game or you can create your own for other players to potentially join your public team. Your public team will be listed in the public teams category once you do create it. And as for what public team you should create, it just all depends on what you're doing. As you can see, each public team will come with some kind of bonus benefit. Like for example, if you choose the Daily Ops public team, you'll get bonus experience for completing Daily Ops. Or if you choose the Events public team, you'll get bonus experience for completing events. Um, the one that I typically choose is the Casual public team, just because this gives us bonus intelligence. And in case you don't know, the more intelligence you have, the more experience you'll get in general for doing anything. So this is like my go-to public team that I like to create. But once again, it just all depends on what you're actually doing. If you're going in to do an Expeditions match, you may just want to start up a public team for Expeditions so other players know what you want to go and do. And by the way, if you ever want to change up your public team or leave the public team that you're currently in, all you got to do is pull up the map once again and go to social and then head on over to the team category. And from here, you just click on your name. And as you can see, you can choose to change the public team or leave the team that you're currently in. It's also good to know from this team tab, you have the power to be able to kick someone from your team or promote someone else to leader. And just in case you don't know, you can manually invite players too, just by clicking on their icon and choosing to invite the team. It's definitely beneficial to try and form a team because it just makes things easier overall and you can get more experience too. All right, so anyways, for this next tip, I'll be showing you all how to get the fusion generator easily. This is an extremely useful generator to have at your camp because as you can see, it produces 100 power. This should be able to power up everything you'll need at your camp. For a quick comparison of the other generators compared to the fusion generator, as you can see, the windmill generator produces 12 power, the small generator produces three, the solar panel produces five, the medium generator, produces five and the large generator produces 10. There's also the super reactor, which also produces a hundred, but personally I prefer the fusion generator over the super reactor. You get the super reactor as a random reward from doing daily ops. It can take a while to get it, but to get the fusion generator, all you gotta do is head on over to the white spring mall, which you can find the white spring mall by heading on over to the white spring resort, which is located right here on the map. I did cover this place in the previous 20 Fallout 76 tips video I made in part two, but I didn't cover where you can go specifically to buy this fusion generator. I just told you all to check out the shops because there's a lot of things that you may find here that could benefit you. And one of those things specifically from this place that I wanted to show you all is the fusion generator. But yeah, once you're over here at the White Spring Resort, you just head on inside, and once you enter the place, you can find the White Spring Mall right down these stairs through these doors. So yeah, once you get in here, a vendor that sells a fusion generator plan will be located inside this shop here. 
just trade with this responders vendor bot that's located right over here in this corner and yeah once you're trading with it if you go over into the notes category you can find a fusion generator plan as you can see this is a way to easily get this it's definitely worth it but yeah anyways these next few tips will be over how to lower the vendor prices just to help you save some caps before purchasing first off it's good to know that the higher charisma that you have the lower the vendor prices will be which you're able to respec your character also down here in the white spring mall a respec station will be located over here in the artisan's corner yeah just head up to this machine and you're able to make it so your charisma is higher on another build you can have multiple builds you can have like one being your main build and another one being a build for lower prices or something i don't know but uh, yeah this is one place you can go to to just quickly make your charisma higher if you want to lower the vendor prices as you can see here the prices are a bit cheaper now like for example the plan to craft the hazmat suits is now 950 instead of 1200 another way to lower the prices even more is by using the charisma perk called hard bargain having this on as well will lower the prices even more it'll also make it so you get better deals when you sell things to the vendors too so yeah it doesn't hurt to throw this perk card on before making a purchase or selling things another way to lower the prices is by wearing unyielding armor the more armor pieces of unyielding that you're wearing the better as you can see a full set that you can wear would be five pieces the left arm right arm chest left leg and right leg and what's special about unyielding armor is that it'll raise your special stats by three except endurance when you have low health so if you have all five pieces to make a complete unyielding armor set you'll get plus 15 to all of your special stats besides you know endurance and don't pay too much attention to my build here this is just a build that i made real quick just to have higher charisma to show you that it lowers prices really beneficial armor set and of course not just to lower prices another benefit out of wearing the unyielding armor set and getting higher special stats is because of the intelligence boost the higher your intelligence the more experience you're going to be getting in general this is the next tip that i was going to let you all know about as you can see here for a preview i have one intelligence and here's how much experience i get for each school i take out So yeah, this is how much experience I get per ghoul for having one intelligence. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you all how much experience I get per ghoul for having higher intelligence. So I'm going to go ahead and boost it up to 15. And I'm also going to put on the unyielding armor set to raise my intelligence even more. I also have three armor pieces that have plus one intelligence on them. So I'll get an extra three intelligence points. So yeah. As you can see, I have 33 intelligence now. And here's how much experience I get per ghoul. Yeah, as you can see, you'll get way more experience in general. It's definitely worth it to have higher intelligence. It's just going to save you time on your level ups. You'll be able to get faster levels without wasting as much time. Even if unyielding armor really isn't your thing because you have to have lower health or you just don't got it, I still recommend to make your intelligence higher to get faster level ups to save you time overall. And once you're done worrying about level ups as much, you can always just respect your character to not have as high intelligence if you don't want it to. But yeah, that's why it's worth it to have high intelligence. And um, I know playing with the unyielding armor set isn't for everyone because you have to have low health for the benefits to come in from it. But it is really useful, I gotta say. It boosts all your special stats besides endurance. It's good to keep in mind also, intelligence is beneficial for some other things too. You can actually figure this out by pulling up your pit boy and from status here, you just go over to special and here you'll be able to find out all the benefits of all the special attributes. As you can see, if we go down to intelligence, it states, intelligence is a measure of overall mental acuity, affects ability to hack terminals, condition and durability of crafted items, experience gained, and returns from scrapping. So yeah, actually, you know what? The next tips I'm gonna be getting into will be about the other special attributes because it's beneficial knowing what each of them do. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into these other ones. 
Strength is a measure of your raw physical power. It affects how much you can carry and the damage of all melee attacks. So for an example here, as you can see right now, I can carry 405. And if I take off my unyielding armor set, I can now only carry 310. Keep in mind, some of my armor pieces are deep pocketed. I did modify a deep pocketed modification on them to allow me to carry a little bit more. But yeah, you get the point. Putting these on definitely boosts your strength so you can carry even more. As you can see, my strength with the armor set off is only at 8, and with it on, it's at 23. So yeah, good boost with it. But anyways, next tip is about the benefits of perception. As you can see, perception affects your awareness of nearby enemies, your ability to detect stealthy movement, and your weapon accuracy in VATS. So that's important to know. The benefits of endurance will be a measure of your overall physical fitness. It affects your total health, the action point drained from sprinting, and your resistance to disease. Charisma I've already went over with how it lowers vendor prices, but I didn't go over something really important that also comes from Charisma, and that is sharing perks. As you can see, Charisma is your ability to lead and help others. It allows you to share higher point perks and also affects your rewards from group quest and prices when you barter. So that's good to know. It also affects your rewards from group quest. But something else very important to know uh, with Charisma, which is actually the next tip I wanted to get into, and that is sharing your perk cards. You can actually share a perk card with a teammate just by pressing whatever it states for you to press to share at the bottom next to pick a perk. Yeah, you just press that on the perk card you wish to share and that will share it with whoever you're on a team with. So yeah, once you share this, for example, Hard Bargain here, all my other teammates will now know Hard Bargain without them having to invest into it whatsoever. Sharing perk cards is extremely useful, especially if you play with a team. It benefits everyone. The more that share perk cards, the better. Gotta add this one in these tips since I'm going over charisma. Sharing perk cards is really important. And how it exactly works, by the way, to be able to share a rank one perk card, you're gonna have to have at least three charisma. To be able to share a rank two perk card, you're gonna have to have at least six charisma. And to be able to share a rank three perk card, you're gonna have to have at least nine charisma. And yeah, that's how it works. It goes up by three for each rank. So a rank four perk card, you would have to have at least 12 charisma and to share a rank 5 per card you're going to have to have 15 charisma the max amount that you can choose within the charisma category i recommend everyone to share perk cards it's very beneficial anyways moving on we've already covered everything with intelligence so next up is agility agility is a measure of your overall finesse and reflexes it affects the number of action points in vats and your ability to sneak so yeah, if you're trying to create like a sneak fats build, you're definitely going to want to be uh, investing into agility. Anyways, lastly up here, we have luck. Luck is a measure of your general good fortune and affects the recharge rate of critical hits as well as the condition and durability of items that you loot. So yeah, that's everything special about the special stats. Alrighty, so anyways, this next tip will be over some time to invest in the woodchucker perk card. The perk card is in the luck category and this will help you collect more wood. As you can see, this perk card makes it so you collect twice as much when harvesting wood. Definitely an essential perk card to invest in. Wish I would have known this in the very beginning because I would have been spending less time gathering wood. Anyway, so yeah, this is actually leading me to my next couple tips. I'm going to be showing you all where the best locations are to find wood scraps at. Wood is extremely essential in Fallout 76. It's used for camp building and cooking. It's definitely something that you're going to want to know where to get. It's all over, but I'm going to be showing you two spots where you can find loads of them at. First one will be located over here at Helvetia. It's right here on the map. It's a pretty easy early location to find right at the start. Once you get over here, you can find some random fallen trees around in the woods and off to the side of the road to harvest for wood. But the main bulk to find wood scraps over at this location will be located right behind this restaurant here. As you can see, you can find tons of wood stacked up right behind this restaurant. I'll go ahead and show you how much I get after harvesting all of these wood piles. Okay, so yeah, I think I got them all. Let's see what I got with having this wood chucker perk card on. 212 wood scraps just from these wood piles right here. And once again, you can find some random logs as well laying around. Like for instance, right over here, not too far from the wood pile. 
just have to search around for them. Okay, just something extra real quick that I wanted to add here, just to blow some of your guys' mind with the attention to detail Bethesda did for this game. Check this out. As you can see, the wood pile is here in the game, but it's also here in real life. This is in Helvetia in West Virginia. I recently took a trip out there. I do plan on making a comparison video over Helvetia in Fallout 76 compared to real life. And let's just say it is highly identical. Bethesda did a very good job implementing it into this game. But anyways, the next location to find tons of wood scraps at will be located right over here at Sylvian Sons Logging Camp. This will be officially the third tip that I'm gonna be showing y'all within this video. There is way more wood scraps over here than there is Helvetia. I just decided to show that location just because it's a pretty early location that you can find within the game at the start for beginner players. So anyways, when you get over to this location, you just wanna head up on into the camp area and you can find just tons of wood scraps. Be warned though, there is some enemies that will be here. They can be kind of a pest. Nothing too difficult though, as you can see. I just got a couple rats, but uh, yeah, anyways, you can find some wood scraps off to the side of the camp to start this off, as you can see, um, oh, can't loot that, right here, you can find some just around the camp, also you can find some on the back of this truck, as you can see, I'll go ahead and show you the total number that I get once I gather up all the wood piles around here, there's also tons of wood piles on the side of this tent, and just look at all these, tons. Once you harvest those, you can find some more wood piles within this tent here as well. And on the other side of this tent too. Once again, loads. But let me go ahead and show you all how much I got just from looting all these wood piles around this tent and on the back of this truck and a few on the outside. Bam! 360 right there. That's not including what I just harvested at Helvetia. I actually left my bag right back here. So I just got a total of 604 wood scraps just from these two locations. Definitely a hot spot to be checking out if you are wanting wood. Like I mentioned, wood scraps are pretty essential within Fallout 76. It's definitely good to know where you can find them at. Okay, so fourth up here, I'm gonna be showing you all how to get steel the fastest in Fallout 76. And it's just simply taking out enemies and scrapping their weapons. One location for a hot spot with enemies will be located over here at the Blackwater Mine, right next to the White Springs Resort. When you get over here, you're gonna find quite a bit of glowing mole miners that you could take out. And I'll go ahead and show you how much steel I get from taking out just the glowing mole miners outside. As you can see, you just wanna take their weapons that they have. Also, you could take this stuff too. Why not? It's just some extra junk and a bit of extra steel too. But yeah, the main bulk of steel will be coming from their weapons. Okay, so once you take out all of the enemies and gather what you can to scrap, you just simply wanna go right in here and there's a weapons workbench right outside of the mine here. Oh, and by the way, for the fifth tip here, before I go ahead and scrap what I found, you wanna make sure you have the scrapper perk card. This is an essential perk card to get the most bang for your buck when you are scrapping stuff. It's located in the intelligence category. As you can see, this takes one star to max it out. And this perk card states that you obtain more components when you scrap weapons and armor. So that's why it's extremely important to be gathering up the weapons and whatnot from the enemies. Definitely be sure to have this perk card equipped before you go ahead and scrap everything. But yeah, check this out. I'll go ahead and scrap what I got just from the outside here. Okay, so their breathers give aluminum and rubber and their filters give copper, rubber, and steel. Their miner suits give black titanium gears and steel. And they also have mole rat teeth, which gives us bone. But yeah, here's what all I got from just the outside. Got 88 steel, 15 wood, 5 rubber, 2 leather, 3 gears, 2 copper, 4 bone shards, 3 black titanium scrap, and 2 aluminum. That's not even counting the inside, which there's just loads more glowing mole miners inside this mine, which the entrance is right over here. And real quick, just an extra tip here, I'm not going to count this toward the list since I am at the same location, but for those of you that are familiar with the Uranium Fever event, which is a pretty common event within Fallout 76, you're going to be taking out a bunch of glowing mole miners around in this vicinity, and you have to protect these from getting destroyed. But yeah, once you take out all the glowing mole miners, be sure to be collecting their weapons and whatnot, because right down here in the entrance to this place, there's another workbench that you can use to scrap all the weapons that you acquire from the mole miners. Which 
once again can add up to quite a bit of scrap for you. Just wanted to throw that out there for y'all. Anyways, let's go ahead and get on to the next one. Okay, so for the sixth tip, I'm gonna be showing you all the best location to find the most amount of lead at in the game. And that is right over here at the Lucky Hole Mine. There is tons of lead veins down in this mine. Okay, so just to show you all proof, I don't have any lead ore on me whatsoever. Which by the way, lead is used to make ammunition. As you can see, I have no lead ore on me. So I'm gonna be showing you all how much I gather down in here overall. And by the way, where you find the lead ore at is on the side of walls in this mine and in these mining carts too, sometimes. As you can see, here's some in this cart. Oh, well, that's a crystal vein. Oh, you do find a bunch of crystal ore as well down in here. Ha, here's a lead vein. Bam. Definitely be sure to be checking in these dead end areas. These areas seem to be most infested with lead veins. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly where everything is down in here because this is a pretty large mine. I'm just shooting you in the direction of where you can find the most lead at. This is the most infested area to find lead veins to get lead ore to make ammunition. This is an extremely useful tip that I wish I knew when I was first starting because then I wouldn't have ran out of ammo so much. Nor would I have to have bought any ammo either because I would have been just stocked up from farming all of this all the time. Oh, and by the way, I guess I should throw this out to y'all just in case some of you don't know about this. Once you get to this area within the mine and you've harvested all of the lead ore that you can find, go through this tunnel system here and harvest all the lead ore that you find on the side of the walls this way and then come back through this tunnel system once you got all that lead ore and there's actually a secret passage here as you can see on our right before we go through this tunnel here yeah there's plenty of lead ore through this tunnel too that you can harvest so keep that in mind it's an easy passageway to pass up and like I mentioned before, I'm not gonna completely hold your hand going through here showing you where every single lead vein is at. Just keep in mind that the Lucky Hole Mine location is the most infested area to find lead at. You'll get more familiar where all the veins are at the more you farm this location, of course. Anyways, as you can see, I got 264 lead ore from this one run down here and 70 raw crystal. And I'm pretty sure you can get more than what I'm showing you here. This is just the gist of what you can acquire down here. It's a pretty insane farm to keep in mind. This is actually one of the advanced tips that I'm adding in this video. All right, so for the seventh tip is a pretty important one, especially if you're trying to farm the lead ore here, is to be sure to be wearing excavator power armor, which I have a link down below in the description to a video of showing how to get this specific power armor if you don't know how. I don't feel like explaining that in this video because I don't wanna drag this on too, too long. But uh, yeah, the reason why you wanna wear excavator power armor is because when you go to uh, harvest a lead vein, you actually get more from the lead vein within the power armor. As you can see right there, I just got a few lead ore, but check this out when I go to actually harvest a lead vein within the power armor. Boom, four, just from harvesting it there once. And then boom, another four. I think I got four or five from just harvesting regularly without the power armor. So it's definitely important to be wearing the excavator power armor when you are farming ore. Okay, so for the eighth tip here, I'm gonna be showing y'all one of the best locations to get plastic at, which is another essential resource within Fallout 76. But yeah, one of the best locations is located right over here at Morgantown at the Morgantown High School. As you can see, I'm right in front of it right now on the map. The reason why I'm showing this location is because this is an easy early area to get to if you are a beginner player. As you can see, the entrance to the high school is right here. Once inside, you just want to gather these plastic pumpkins that you'll find around the building. As you can see, I just found two right there off the start. Here's a third one. They're just located all around inside this building. Also, be wary, there are some enemies inside here too. Nothing too powerful, because after all, this is one of the beginner locations. Still, nonetheless, a great farming spot for plastic. As you see, here's some more plastic pumpkins. Look at all these. Yeah, you can just find all kinds of goodies in here to stock up on scrap, especially here in the cafeteria. You can find plenty of plastic plates, spoons, and forks, not to mention knives, 
within this area of the high school. And especially don't forget to check out the gymnasium while you're looting through here as well. There is tons of plastic material within the gymnasium too. I mean, just look at all these plastic plates right here stacked on one another. You can also find plenty of plastic pumpkins in this area too. Not to mention you can find plenty of materials in here that you can scrap for rubber as well, such as all these golf balls. Okay, so from that one run at Morgantown High School, let's see what all I got. Okay, so as you can see, I got 92 plastic, which was the material that I was looking for within the high school. There is plenty of other materials that you can find within the place, such as those golf balls that I was mentioning, but I didn't pick all those up. I only picked up like two, but yeah, keep that in mind. You can get even more junk scrap than what I'm showing you here. My main goal was just to show you that it is loaded with plastic. Okay, so for the ninth tip here, I'm gonna be showing you one of the best ways to farm acid at, which is located right up here at this workshop. As you can see, it's called Hemlock Holes Maintenance. It's right next to the Hemlock Holes location. The reason why I'm showing this one is because, once again, this is an easy early area that you can get to in the game if you are a beginner player. And as you can see, at this workshop, there are three acid spots that we can take over to accumulate acid over time when just casually playing the game. So yeah, you just wanna claim this workshop. Keep in mind when you do claim workshops, this can initiate you into PVP. So that is the downfall over this, but if you have a private server, this should be no problem to farm the acid. But if you aren't in a private server, you could possibly be facing some other players that are wanting this workshop. Just depends on the player, I guess. But yeah, as you can see, here's one spot that you can place an acid extractor at. Bam. And here are the other two. So just go to your resources and place the extractors here. Then once you got them all hooked up, you simply want to get power to them. However, you want to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and set up a fusion generator on top of this and then connect my wiring to each extractor to get them running. Wire is too long. Oh heck no. So if that happens to you, just place a power connector somewhere and that's how you can go about doing that. And the good thing about claiming workshops, it won't take away your camp that you've already built. There are places on the map that you can find acid spots at that you can build your camp around and have an acid extractor there. Okay, got all the extractors running. And over time, these will give us acid. Of course, there will be sometimes enemies that will attack here, but you're typically notified in the top right. As you can see at the moment, I have to defend Hemlock Hole's maintenance. Alrighty, so anyways, for the 10th tip here, I'm gonna be showing you all one of the best locations to go to to farm cloth, and that will be located right over here at the new Appalachian Central Train Yard. It's a little above White Springs Resort. Anyways, once you get over here, you just wanna head over in this train wreckage, and this destroyed building over here has three different safes that you can loot, and all of the safes will contain pre-war money, which you can scrap pre-war money for cloth. I'll go ahead and get back to y'all when I loot every single safe in here and show you all the pre-war money that I get. Okay, so within here I found 42 pre-war money. Also, by the way, just throwing this out there real quick, you can find a pretty wear mask inside this safe here. As you can see, it's called the Fosnot Man Mask. Looks pretty eerie. Anyways, from these three safes that you can find in this room, you can also go over here up in this building, you can find another safe, which will give you quite a bit more pre-war money that you can scrap for cloth. So I got a total of 53 pre-war money from that run, which adds up to 53 cloth. Anyways, next up here for the 11th tip I have for y'all is to invest into the Ammo Smith perk card, which is located in the agility category. And for the 12th tip I have for y'all is to invest into Super Duper, which is located in the luck category. As you can see, what Super Duper does is when you craft anything, there's a 30% chance you'll get double results, which definitely doesn't hurt. And what the Ammo Smith perk card does, it makes it so you produce 80% more rounds when crafting ammunition. Definitely crucial perk cards to be investing in when you are making ammo. Alrighty, so anyways, now since you guys know the essentials on where to get most of the resources at in the game, I'm gonna go ahead and show you all for the 13th tip on how to make gunpowder. 
you just want to head on over to to a chemistry station and go under the ammo category and as you can see you can make 15 gunpowder for three acid and five cloth i've already showed you how to get cloth and acid and i also showed you about the super duper perk card that i just mentioned which you want to be sure you have that equipped when you go to make these because you can have a chance at getting 30 for three acid and five cloth so yeah now let's go ahead and make some gunpowder and and up next since we got the gunpowder made let's go ahead and craft some ammunition which in order to craft ammunition which this will be the 14th tip you want to head on over to a tinker's workbench once again be sure to have the super duper perk card on and the ammo smith perk card on because that's going to make it so you make more ammunition at once i'm gonna go ahead and make 45 rounds since i rock a fixer as you see it's going to cost lead steel and gunpowder which I showed you how to get all of this in this one video. Pretty insane. By the way, what I didn't mention, which will be the 15th tip in this video, how to make your lead ore into lead. Which in order to do that, ooh, as you see the super duper perk card actually worked with some of that ammunition I just made. But anyways, how you do that is once again go up to a chemistry station and go down to smelting. As you can see, you can make five lead scrap for one acid and two lead ore. Once again, I've already showed you how to get acid, and I also showed you in a very efficient way to get lead ore. So yeah, bam! There you have it, everyone. That's how you do that. That's 15 tips so far. Sheesh, they're getting a little bit faster, I know. The 16th tip I have for you all that I wish I knew from the beginning is playing instruments. If you play an instrument for a certain amount of time, you actually get well-tuned. Bam! As you can see, I feel well-tuned now. And what this does is, go ahead and show you, if I go ahead and head on over to stats and check out effect, this makes it so I have plus 25 action point regeneration for an hour. Definitely something to take advantage of, because it's really simple too. Anyways, next up here for the 17th tip is just simply sleeping in your bed. If you sleep in your bed long enough and make your character well rested, you actually get bonus experience. Boom. I officially feel well rested. And check this out. When I go over to my stats category, once again, and my pit boy, as you see, it gives me plus 5% experience for two hours. Definitely something, once again, to take advantage of. Anyways, for the 18th tip that I wish I knew from the start, will be located right over here at the White Springs Resort. It's right by the White Springs Golf Club. I'm right by it on the map. And over here, you can find this gazebo. And underneath this, you can find this special sulfur water fountain. And when you drink out of it, you actually cure any of your diseases that you have. And currently, I have the disease dysentery. And I can get rid of this just by drinking out of this water fountain. Check this out. Bam! I recovered from it now. Pretty beneficial. It can cure any of your diseases. Unfortunately, however, when you go to collect water from this water fountain, you don't get sulfur water. You just get regular old dirty water. That's the unfortunate part. Anyway, speaking of getting rid of your diseases, this 19th tip that I'm gonna be going over is something so you don't get rid of your mutations. A lot of players use mutations, especially myself, because they are pretty beneficial in the game. As you can see, I have adrenal reaction, chameleon, marsupial, and talons. And how I'm able to not get rid of any of these mutations, which by the way, you get from just getting radiated every now and then, or you can drink mutation serums to specifically get a mutation that you're looking for. But in order to not get rid of these ever when you take right away, like look, check this out. I'll go ahead and use a right away. As some of you may know, this would typically get rid of your mutations, but yeah, as you can see, they are all still there. And the reason why this is, is because I have starch genes equipped, which is a luck perk card. What this does is it makes it so you will never mutate from rads and right away will never cure mutations. So if you don't technically want mutations ever, this is a perk card to use, which I know some players out there just want to play regularly instead of being mutated. Or if you just want to keep the mutations that you have, this is the perk card to use. All in all, an essential perk card to check out. Okay, so for the last and final tip that I'm going to be adding into this video is to be sure to be scrapping your legendaries to the legendary exchange machine, which you can find at all train stations. So any of the train station locations that you'll find around the map, and there are plenty of train station locations. So yeah, as you can see, at the moment I don't have anything that I really want to get rid of, 
but if you have a three star legendary weapon you can exchange it for 40 script and then if you have a three star legendary armor you can exchange that for 24 and there are plenty of legendary pieces that you're going to be getting that you're not going to want so be sure to be using this exchange machine and you can use this script with the purveyor which this is the purveyor so 60 script can get you a random three star legendary armor piece and a 100 script can get you a random three star legendary melee or ranged weapon. And I think this is totally worth it because there's tons of legendaries that you're gonna be getting that you're just gonna to want to get rid of. And this is definitely something to take advantage of in the game because you might get something that you really want from one of these random legendaries that you get from the purveyor. But yeah, that is how the purveyor works. At the moment, the purveyor is located right over here, but when the Wastelanders DLC releases, the purveyor will be located over here at the rusty pick so keep that in mind but yeah i guess that's about finally wrapping up this video this took absolutely forever to make but hopefully this is something that helps new and veteran players out in some kind of way by the way if you found this enjoyable it'd be greatly appreciated if you could take a little bit of your time and leave a like the support helps get the video more passed around the community so more players can learn about these essential tips in Fallout 76. And hey, maybe if you're new around here, consider subscribing for my channel for more Fallout 76 content. As always though, all of that is totally up to you. Just leaving a friendly reminder here at the end. But yeah, I'm out of here though, everybody. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, remember to try to stay safe out there. Peace.